Hello and welcome to another episode of The Clever Dev. We're going to take a look at React Spring and create an animation using their use transition hook. So we're going to make those juggling balls that we saw. And we're going to start with just a simple data set of those three balls. They each have a name and a color and an XY position. So what we're going to do is we've just, I've gone ahead and imported that data just for the sake of time. And I know that we're going to end up using use transition, of course. We're going to use the div.animated, kind of a native div to React Spring. And we're going to use the interpolate functionality. We've also, of course, gone ahead and imported the data that we just looked at. And we're going to do a deep clone of that data. And I'll get into the reason why in just a few minutes. So that said, we've also got our data variable set up, the original data, and then um, a stateful uh, version of that data here. Let's go ahead and start setting things up so that we can have some kind of time-based transition. We're going to use the use effect hook to make that happen. So we want it time-based, so we're going to use this set, the set interval function that's JavaScript. And we're just going to go ahead and do a little function call within it. We'll actually update this a little more in just a moment. Now we got to get our time interval in there. And I'm going to go ahead and put the dependency array for the use effect hook. Okay, so right now we're updating the rows state uh, constant every half second. So we don't actually just want to update the rows data. We're actually going to go ahead and rotate the values within that rows data. So for example, the item that is at the end will be popped off and then using the array unshift function will be actually put then back into the array at the zeroth position. So we'll kind of rotate through. Yellow going to the front, then red will go to the front, then blue will go back to the front. Let's call that function rotate items. Take that uh, list, of an array list, uh, an array named list, and there. So like I mentioned, we're going to do a list.pop, or array.pop, and we're going to do an unshift also, but instead of saving that popped value, this pops off the item from the end of the array and returns it, we're going to go ahead and immediately use that, and just feed it into our unshift. So this will return that list that has been modified. However, there's something more that we need to do. So we want to create the illusion of juggling. So right now we'll be rotating items through, but we actually always want the zeroth item to have this x value and y value. The item at the first position have that x and y. Item at the last position, these respective x and y values. So we need another function in order to do that. I'll call it set position. We'll pass it once again, our array, calling it list. Go ahead and put this in up here. So set position, we're gonna pass it the list, and whatever is returned from set position is gonna be what's returned from rotate items. We're gonna take that list, we're gonna map over it, and for each item in it, and we need the index also. And then we're going to have a little function, and it's going to be pretty simple. It's just going to take that that list. So the list is the modified data. It's not the original data or the starting positions. We're going to say, okay, take, let's say, the zeroth item or the first item or the second item, and we're going to reset the x value to what that item originally had. And we're going to do the same for the y value. So I mentioned that we've done a we've used Lodash's deep clone function up here. So if we just did a shallow copy, we have an array of objects, and the fields on the objects um, 
would still be linked together, so to speak. So if I mutate the rows value, then the, uh, if I was using a shallow copy, then the original data would also be mutated, this imported data. However, with a deep copy, it makes a copy, a new copy of the array with new objects and the properties on those objects, so kind of the, the nesting further down beyond the, below the top level, um, it's new objects or properties at the nested levels of the top level objects as well. So we've updated these values, and since this is a map, we want to return the item. So we've now created, and now we're setting this rows state constant with um, every half second it's getting fresh data into it, or really it's getting um, rotated data in it with the original X and Y positions for that respective spot. So that's all well and good, but we actually need to kind of use the React Spring magic to have a good looking transition. I'm going to create a constant called transitions. And we're going to finally use that React Spring use transitions. Here. Now we're going to give it three parameters. The first is just mapping over, uh, basically giving it back its data that it originally had. We're going to return just the spread copy of each object, a new copy of each object. Okay, so that's that first parameter. The second parameter is pretty interesting. It's actually a key value, or it's it's a key. So the transitions object uh, array of objects that we're going to get, um, we could have a key that's the index. We could have a key that's an object name. If it was an array of strings, and we could just have the key observing the string values instead of the index positions, that actually gives us the ability to do some interesting animations. And there's some great animation tutorials on the React Spring use transition page, and um, they've influenced this tutorial that I'm doing, but in one of them it shifts around some array, uh, some item, some strings in an array, and does some really cool transitions as it removes a string value or adds a string value. So I encourage you to check it out. Let's get in that final parameter here. It's an object with the actual um, events that we care about. So we're actually already mechanically rearranging the values in our array. I say mechanically, or maybe brute force, whatever you want to call it. So that means that in the actual transitions, we're not really doing that much. We're not really doing anything. So let's take a look at this. We're saying on enter, um, do nothing really. Take the x and y values. You're just going to keep them the same. Same thing with any kind of update. Take the x and y values. Keep them the same. However, just creating this, uh, just using the use transition hook, that will give us access to, or it will give us the ability to allow React Spring to manage the animations on these three objects that we're creating. So now all we got left is to do the uh, write the actual JIF stack so that we have. Uh, proper uh, HTML that we care about and the um, animations get hooked into. So we'll just start with this transitions, map over it, and let's see here. We care about having an item in there about the props. So we'll need access to the x value, y value, and then we care about that key that we talked about. Okay, so we've got our map parameters set up. Now we need the actual function that we care about. Simply return one of these. You could call it almost a native 
um, animated.div. We're not going to have any children on it, so... But we do care about that key value. Right here. I give it a key value that it needs. And just a little bit of CSS preset up, it's just positioning. So, we'll give it that. And the most interesting thing is the style property. First we're going to set a background. That item CSS, that simply comes from the CSS in our object. More interesting is transform. We'll use the react interpolate helper function. And in this case, we're using it to be able to affect both our X and our Y values and have access to both of them. So these are the parameters that we're passing into the interpolate function. And then we gotta actually write the function. So we kind of made X and Y accessible, passing them into the function here. And we're just gonna one line this. Set our x value and our y value. So let's take a look. Normally, you should write a little code, take a look, make sure everything's working fine. There we go. Okay, now that's exactly why you should do that. So, let's see what we've got going on. But since this is a tutorial and I've already run through it and built it prior to this, then of course I just kind of go through it a little bit faster. It's always good to stop and check, make sure everything looks good. So my bet is that we're doing something not quite right. Okay, I think I see what it is. We never went back and updated our use effect. We're just feeding it in. We were just feeding it in data, but we didn't actually pass that data in to our rotate items and therefore our set position. So we weren't actually updating the data at all. Let's take a look now. That's what it is right there. There we go. That fixed it. So I was accidentally trying to access an X and Y value on that list instead of the item. It's always a good idea to use TypeScript. The reason that I didn't is because TypeScript was being a little bit difficult with this use transition uh, hook here. And sometimes these third-party libraries can be a little bit difficult to use TypeScript on. But anyway, so there we go. There we have our nice animation. I hope that you appreciated this tutorial and I would um, love to see you back at another of my videos, so please do hit the subscribe button.